So this is George Oppens of Being Numerous, uh, section one. There are things we live among and to see them is to know ourselves. Occurrence, a part of an infinite series, the sad marvels. Of this was told the tale of our wickedness. It is not our wickedness. You remember that old town we went to and we sat in the ruined window and we tried to imagine that we belonged to those times? It is dead and it is not dead and you cannot imagine either its life or its death. The earth speaks and the salamander speaks. The spring comes and only obscures it. Two. So spoke of the existence of things, an unmanageable pantheon, absolute, but they say arid. A city of the corporations, glassed in dreams and images, and the pure joy of the mineral fact, though it is impenetrable as the world, if it is matter, is impenetrable. The, uh, number three, the emotions are engaged, entering the city as entering any city. We are not coeval with the locality, but we imagine others are. We encounter them. Actually, a populace flows through the city. This is a language, therefore, of New York. Four, for the people of that flow are new. The old, new to age, is the young to youth. And to their dwelling, for which the tarred roofs and the stoops and doors, a world of stoops, our petty alibi and satirical wit will not serve. Five, the great stone above the river in the pylon of the bridge, 1875, frozen in the moonlight in the frozen air over the footpath, consciousness which has nothing to gain, which awaits nothing, which loves itself. Six, we are pressed, pressed on each other. We will be told at once of anything that happens and the discovery of fact bursts in a paroxysm of emotion now as always. Crusoe, we say, was rescued, so we have chosen. Seven, obsessed, bewildered by the shipwreck of the singular, we have chosen the meaning of being numerous. I think that's a great place to start, uh, to, well, to stop and then to start. <laughs> uh, and Barbara's back, huzzah. <laughs> um, so that's the first seven sections of George Oppen's um a uh, long poem of being numerous which uh was uh, well received and awarded the Pulitzer prize for poetry in um the late 60s so uh yeah what do, what do we what do we make of this i mean you know i set it up as as a whitmanian poem you know to contrast it with the dickinsonian poem we just read uh it's a poem about new york city too that seems very obvious um, but you know, what does it mean of being to be a numerous, right? Or of being numerous? How does this wait? This last line here is the one that I just read was we have chosen obsessed, bewildered by the shipwreck of the singular, we have chosen the meaning of being numerous. That's 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 crazy. I don't <laughs> obsessed, bewildered by the shipwreck of the singular. We have chosen the meaning of being numerous. I have no idea what that means, but it seems like the skeleton key to, to unlocking the entire poem. We don't have to necessarily start with that. We can start anywhere else if there's any like first reactions. Oh, um, of being numerous, uh, of being international, of being a New Yorker. Yeah, yeah, and you, you write. Um, the sheer peopleness of New York, right? Uh, well, the, the idea that that I had was the, the beginning of of Moby Dick, which also starts in in New York, and it, to to show the internationalism of uh, New York and how different um people are, and that's what what came to to my mind, and also this Whitmanian idea. Um, uh, Whitman also writes about his hometown Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Manhattan or, or is he is he called Manhattan or is it Ma Manhattos or something like that? Yeah, it's 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 like... yes, all forms. <laughs> okay, it's Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, of course it's Manhattan. Yeah. The it's... the the um the the little part that jumped out to me um was the start of three. Um, the emotions are engaged, entering the city as entering any city, and. And this, what you read, uh, Max, gave me an idea of flow and of people flowing through this city. Yeah. 
and that 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 just brought um Elliot's the Wasteland to me, which we did this oh. month in an earlier yeah. um, European meetup. I know it's not on the Modpo syllabus, but we we really? went off and looked at it. Um, and and the, yeah, the, this this chimed with my recollections of those discussions. That's yeah, that chorus. Yeah, there's there's an absolute like um, you know echo. I think you're right with with uh, Eliot. You know, which would have been a poem published almost 50 years before uh this one but you know the the foundational text of of modernist poetry but of course in in you know in the wasteland you know the the various like streams and rivers they're they're, they're like these sticks like rivers of, of dead souls right yeah. um whereas yeah here it's like emotions are this is section three the emotions are engaged entering the city as entering any city we are not coeval with the locality, but we imagine others are, we encounter them. Actually, a populace flows through the city. This is a language for their four of New York, for the people of that flow are new, the old, right? There's a flow and it's, yeah, it's, again, it's river-like, it's a current, but it doesn't have that same connotation that of the the river of the dead or something, right? Like it's, it's more matter of fact, which is kind of interesting, you know, to see that sort of update. Yes, uh, but it's uh, with with Manian, um Whitman, sure. uh, who's uh, New York, and he has um, the the flow of of the masses that um, even go through him. Um, he adopted that idea from from Emerson with this transparent eyeball. It's it's no longer nature. It's it's the city, the the, the masses of people that come and go. Yeah. And the sticks like river, um you have the, the East River, which he passed um on, on the ferry. Uh yeah. When he went to to work and back home. And also the, the East River is indirectly mentioned here, uh, because he mentions the bridge with the stone 1875, which if I'm not mistaken, that must be the Brooklyn Bridge, which uh crosses or spans the East River from Manhattan to Brooklyn, which of course comes to replace Whitman's ferry um so you know there's there there's totally this these very you know there's there's women in here there's rivers you know there's all this it's the same site as 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 uh you know so these these works of of women or you know the same area that, that women kind of worked with and then um you know when he was writing about uh 19th century new york city this of course is a century later this is um mid 20th century New York City, where the corporations are, where everything is glass, right? It's very different from, from Whitman's New York, where nothing was <laughs> glass, <laughs> uh, except for the windows. Yes, but um, the, the language is quite um, Whitmanian. Yeah. All the contradictions um, of, of being numerous. Uh, he includes um, everything. He has the thing, the, um, the, the item he talks about, and he also has the, the opposite, and he also contradicts, he really includes everything. It's yeah. numerous. Mm. Yeah, 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 that, 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 that uh, you know, containing multitudes, right, right. But though it's, it's, it's the, Whitman had the multitudes and Oppen has the, the, the numerousness. Um, similar of our wickedness it is not our wickedness so it must be the wickedness of someone else um so uh it's quite numerous yeah um isn't that the original sin that our wickedness is not our wickedness ah uh, okay <laughs> fall of man yes yes Lee, Lee, were you about to, to jump in? Oh, yeah. Um, I was thinking like the numerousness and uh, the Whitman uh, containing multitudes. And in this poem, it's more like, or poem sections of poems, it's more like you encounter or you recognize the multitudes, maybe. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be inside the individual, or maybe we don't know how to find it if we are in a group of people something like that can you say more on that on that last that last point mm, 
about the like uh wait so, so so do you mean that like there's there's a sense of recognition more so in this poem or or i, I didn't quite follow what you meant yeah about uh maybe recognize or recognizing yourself because of the context of where you are and the okay. people around you and being in a city and the, uh, there was another section occurrence a part of an infinite series yeah like everything is happening again and again and mm -hmm. if i'm going through it then my neighbor is going through it and that neighbor is going through it and it's like there is not much of an individual uh words or um meaning mm -hmm. meaning is in being being here with everyone else mm -hmm. Uh, so that seems kind of empty to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 there's this, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a different, well, what you're saying is making me wonder about like how, you know, he relates to these multitudes, uh, you know, this numerous flow of people. I mean, because like women is, you know, women all wants to like, I don't know, he wants to, to relate to them and everything, but there's some that I don't know, Oppen here seems more out of remove to me, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, when you, when you... Oh. <laughs> more that you're maybe if you are so distracted by everything around you, then you can't find Yeah, yeah. There's like yeah, that. yeah, exactly. There's and there's something about like because there's something also about like a, a different phase of modernity that's being thought about in this poem, right? I mean, he says the city of corporations in glass, right? That's, that's very different from from a, from a previous, you know, ur urban life. Um, you, Rune, did you want to did you want to jump in? Uh, I want to add to that that when he says in the, in the second. Uh part the pure joy of mineral fact and uh he really uh abandons humanity and when you think about whitman when he uh would, would talk about uh, the brooklyn bridge of course he would talk about everybody who was walking across it and doing stuff yeah and here we have the uh the big stone that says 1875 that's the essence of the brooklyn bridge it's, yeah it's pure mechanical or, or uh well non-human yeah yeah no that's the yeah that's right right the pure and the pure joy of the min the mineral fact so yeah this this reduction to something mm -hmm. non-human and solid and something that's going to outlive everyone who uses it more or less <laughs> right like um it's yeah it's it's yeah that's 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 an interesting sort of detail for him. It's very different than, you know, it's making me think here of the blab of the pave, right? Which is our common Whitman, uh, you know, that's how we always talk about Whit the Whitmanian style. And there we're always, you know, we, we take the, the pave, the pavement, the paving stone to be this kind of like, it's a stage, right? On which all these this, these various like dramas of everyday life are 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 playing out, and Whitman wants to capture the blab, right? Like, but you know, in the way here, you know, this this mineral fact there's this there's this wish to kind of foreground the pavement, right? To be like, to be like, you know, we need to deal with not not the street as uh, something that's constituted by its human uses, but the street as like stone you know as concrete as this thing that's just like you know impenetrable the street itself or in this case perhaps you know the the stones of the the, the pillars that hold up the suspension bridge of the the brooklyn bridge right like like it's not about the people you know crossing this thing it's just about like the thing itself mm -hmm. what you know what happens when we actually you know stick to that what happens when the blab when the blab makes us think of the pave right rather than the pave making us you know tune into the blab but but you also have that in uh section three um this is a language of new york right right this is right right yeah, that's what he says this is the language of new york uh, a populace flows through the city and then it is explained which city it is 
Das ist New York. Yes, but, but, uh, but, but the populace flows through the city. It is it is definitely not the the city itself. So the the um, the concrete, the 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 the, the um, the the mineral the impenetrable matter is 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 the the, the real city not the the people right but what is ambiguous is um what is a language of new york this what's this is it the populace a populace that that flows through the city is it the flowing i i would say it's the <laughs> flowing but that's but that's because i you know i can't help but but separate this poem or no i can't i can't help but read this poem within its historical mm -hmm. context of the late 60s of you know new york city and the, the full conversion to a sort of service economy the corporatization of manhattan and how important the flow becomes you know meaning the flow of 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 resources of of capital of of information right like everything be, you know everything becomes so oriented towards flow uh starting in the mid-century um and rivers and yeah. right and then of course it ties back there you know, the river serves that sort of you know there's a kind of natural metaphor for for the flows that that sustain New York City, I have a little idea. Um, in in maybe they say it in Spanish, but Italian, French, they say when there's a uh, when there's a meeting and someone introduces themselves, he says uh, in French they say thank you very much for being so numerous. Yeah. And it's a way of saying he's glad that a lot of people came, but in a weird way, it's like, are you thanking me? I I just came. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, there is this idea that there's some social animal that's bigger than us. So when you talk about the populist flows, um, maybe we have to keep in mind that it's it, it, there are social and it is it is society, but they're also made of individuals. And um, yeah. And so he's saying we are numerous. Well, I'm not, uh, but I tend to live in cities, so I become part of the crowd. So it's like individual versus society kind of thing and and also if i get uh, one other thing of the singular i like that word because singular often means single but it also means bizarre sometimes strange Fish. and i think it'd be interesting to know why um uh, when did singular become strange it, it, etymologically yeah yeah i i imagine i i'm just well you know what i have the Merriam-Webster dictionary open for me, so why don't we just go for it? Uh, I was just about to venture a completely uninformed guess, but let's um, singular as in meaning outlandish. Where's the etymology? It that's that could be a tough one to find. I'll look up at Oxford. Because there's only one of it, so. Mm. Yeah, I can't. I can't find the etymology for that meaning. But I mean, it, it must predate this poem, right? So, uh... <laughs> I think it means somebody special. Like yeah. a singular violinist yeah. or, or como the pianist um gold. Uh they call this a singular interpreter of, of Bach's Goldberg variations, for example, somebody special who does it much differently from the others. Yeah. But also in this idea, this is a language of New York. New York has hundreds of languages. Yeah. And I got the impression that it's this mixture that's going on, forming. Like like Woody Allen Jewish New York talk or or Franz Libovitz, they have a special language, but they're all kind of other people speaking Puerto Rican Spanish or Polish or whatever, and 
Asian people, everybody's speaking something in New York that's not really any language, any specific one. I, I thought of that this a language of New York, this movement, this is the part that makes mm. it one, uni unique, our language. The I that the mosaic. Mm. I also understood that as a mosaic of languages. Hmm. Um, okay. later on, um, Oppen also talks about uh, dialects. There are hmm. also forms of language. Maybe later. Above in section three, I think those lines, we are not co eval with a locality, but we we imagine others are. I thought that, I thought that was an interesting um set of lines that it's, that yeah i i agree barbara there's so much we are not equal with the locality but we imagine others are we all are guilty of this right like uh not, not that it's like not that it's a capital crime but right like when you go someplace you're like when you go to new york you're like hey look there's a new yorker as a new yorker right but you're like you know but i belong to no place right or, or no you might have a sense of belonging but it's not you're not coeval it's it's you're not completely contained you know, to, to that, like you can, you leave the place where you're from, you can go to other places, you return, but it's true, you know, and there, it's, it's also speaks, I think, to the way that people and humanity is represented here uh, or not represented some of the time, at least in the sections of this poem that we, that we read, right? Like there isn't, the, the people have become flows, they've become almost part of the infrastructure of the city right like the, the and so they become coeval with it insofar as they're like you know you go to new york and it's like there's just so much teeming masses of people this people are so numerous and they're flowing they're coming and going it's not even something to like to stop and admire and try to absorb in the way that whitman did it's just like it's just part of the 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 circulatory system of this place um and so you know it's it's something that he seems to be working through here like how can you you know in some ways it's the shipwreck of the singular right like the, the in the last section you know how can you how can you pluck one subject out how can you underscore one thing or how can you hold one person or one set of people or one event or something uh and 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 try to showcase it in a poem or a story or whatever how how can you do that in the face of such numerousness right like there's just too many people there's too much stuff like how I, you know that's the shipwreck of the singular like there's no more sense of the singular either as like a single entity or as or as something noteworthy or exceptional because we have we can observe too much of everything all of the time and thus you know who are we to say that there isn't constantly exceptional things happening to all of these singular people who make up the numerousness and i think that's sort of the problem he's trying to work through um in a way in this uh in this poem and, yeah. and in um, in section four he does break down what he means by the flow and it's kind of like it's everybody it's it's the new and the old who are new to age and the young of her new to youth and and then um the later part of that section i'm not sure what a stoop is is that a particular new york word that... yeah so the stoop the stoop is where your uh so so your house or your building will have a short staircase leading up to it and the stoop is that's the stoop essentially and right. it's a very it's a very new york uh concept because people hang out on their stoops they sit on the steps to be on the street um, because it's certain... I think it's the Dutch word. Yorum. It's a Dutch word. Is it? Oh, it is. It, it, is it the in Yorum? Is it a Dutch word? It's O E. Oh, of course. Well, then maybe that's why it has. That's what so, it's so important to New York. New yeah, of course. Yeah, that's that's why. Yeah, maybe that was brought over to New York City, right? Yeah, of course. I I don't think it's about um tourism. Um, it's uh you, you have a Crusoe as. as a representative of of, of the shipwreck. Uh, I think he is also um, referring to these immigration waves that that came to to New York. Mm, yeah, that we had those yeah. um, singular fates that, in a way, are similar to all the others, and um, 
this is also um we imagine others they they, they have the, the same fate although it is different it's almost like the the people that you it's almost as though you're a tourist in the city and you you see the same you see all of these people in the same way as you see all of the buildings and all of the tourist attractions it sort of uh collapses the population into another object mm -hmm. of tourism right just to behold the throngs of people right is this uh... in such a generality without without seeing the distinctions it it just becomes a yeah flow and that's you know that's the way people today sometimes from the west who travel to uh countries and big cities in the east um you know will say like oh you have to you know to go to tokyo just to see how crowded it is right just to see like the mass of humanity right because even now new york city seems tame in comparison to uh to places like tokyo or mumbai um it's uh or, or delhi right like it seems like you know so in some ways it's a little dated right like he's uh, you know obviously there have been crowded cities in the past but in the 60s you know if you're george oppen the you know the the most crowded place you can possibly reach is probably new york city uh you know realistically um and so that's just like this you know this this that's that's where you confront the mass of humanity and it becomes this curiosity i think you know right like this thing to, to behold like whoa and it makes me think about you know taking it out of out of the poem a little bit but when you think of people say who've never left the country um that i mean the country as rural they li li they live in a rural area <laughs> they definitely don't see themselves coeval with the people in new york right. i mean they can't they just see new yorkers as one big uh, stereotype i guess yeah. i'll say or one big identity and they they can't single it out which causes a lot of problems um and vice versa i would say you know a new yorker probably has an idea of someone living in the midwest sure. that is also kind of a stereotypical kind of global look so um you know i think that can be extended into the present and, and a broader context Yeah, I did, yeah. Go, I did go ahead, that in the in the poem as well, with the kind of like maybe elitist way of looking at people that want to be alone or want to be on an island on their own, <laughs> want to be a shipwreck maybe, <laughs> and then Robinson maybe Crusoe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's this obsessed, bewildered, and that we say he was rescued. Like there's this idea that living in a city and uh, going into the crowd and you know being part of everything is better than being on your own. Right, but he, he puts rescued in scare quotes there about Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, right? he doesn't think so. But maybe yeah, Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crusoe would say was rescued, so. you know, <laughs> brought yeah. back to the brought back to the to the urban mass of humanity. Yeah. Um, the civilization essentially yeah that, that's cool. interesting oh. no i just because they, they say twice so we have chosen um yeah. we have chosen the meaning of being numerous we have, so we have chosen to be rescued in quotes mm -hmm. but then later he says so they have chosen so it's interesting that they he he repeats that phrase We have chosen numerousness, right? That's what he's saying. Like as as a society, because he says even reaching back to to the seventeenth uh, century to or or the or, sorry early eighteenth uh, century with Robinson Crusoe, you know the the um, you know all, it, it, for hundreds of years we have thought of 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 you know humanity has strived towards a kind of numerousness, even you know three hundred years ago. Robinson Crusoe, the it had to be rescued from his isolation, right? So we, as a civilization, as a humanity, we choose numerousness. We see that as the better condition, and so we rescue people from their 
um, you know, we, we rescue uh, uh, people who have been shipwrecked, lost at sea, stranded on desert islands. We have to go out and save them because that, you know, being alone, although, you know, Robinson Crusoe is not really alone, but uh, he's he's away from his society. Right. Um, we He had to be brought back. He had to be res- rescued. You know, the humanity had to kind of cluster together into this numerous blob. Right. And like that's that's just what has to happen. So we have chosen. Which is the, quite the contrast with the the uh, earlier en- enlightenment, when people said, "Well, when, when we are alone, we have this perfect condition, and then we are right. uh, uh, we we go uh, we essentially uh, lose our perfect humanity by being in a society." It's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. I was just going to say, you know, who's the we? He's universalizing. Yeah. And every identify with with we. Everyone cho- chose to be numerous. Um, that's that's sort of an interesting thought. Good it's definitely you're sort of discussing it. It's a kind of a Western um, approach to analyzing what's going on. That's 100%. Yeah, we, we, you know, we could definitely like interrogate and deconstruct this, this we, right? Who is he, who is he lumping together? We, you know, at times, you know, we are pressed, pressed on each other. It sounds like the New Yorkers, right? Although on one hand, he's observing, you know, in four, section four is like, for the people of that flow, or, you know, he's observing the flow. And then in six, we are pressed, pressed on each other. He's in the flow. Uh, and then, you know, Crusoe, we say, was rescued. We is, I imagine, people who have read uh, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. Uh, and he says, so we have chosen, which then becomes, um, you know, a sort of larger comment on human civilization. But obviously, of course, you know, all of his references are are not only American, but or no, they're American or they're Anglophone or they're just def- definitely Western, right? Um, I think that's a good point. Because, because I don't think anybody would deny when you when you have if you're presented with the story of Robinson Crusoe, you would say he was rescued. And in fact, you if you read it, you are held in a suspense, hoping he gets rescued. So you can't deny that you haven't chosen that you prefer to be rescued than to be on the island. Right, totally. <laughs> and and the, so the we is is everybody in our time coeval with us. <laughs> At um, least there. Other times it seems like it's New Yorkers, but no, I think um, I think that's that's true. Uh, Mark, did were you going to jump in? Oh, uh, just uh, indicating that it certainly has these um, three or how many meanings um, we often encounter in 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 Modpo. So we, the group we are in. We a generalization mm. in sense of one they or whatever, or it's the the, the New Yorkers, and it does say uh, Caruso. We say was rescued. It doesn't say Caruso definitely was rescued. It it leaves some room there. Mm. We say he's rescued, but. Who says he was rescued? And do we all did right, he... right, 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 right? Like the him. sense of seeing. It's like the sense of seeing. He sensed yeah. that he was rescued. A little bit. Is that what you're saying, Barbara? A little bit. Well, I... just yeah. all of these universal statements. I'm, I'm. I mean, I haven't thought through this a lot, but but there are a lot of universal statements that I guess my automatically kind of critical mind wants to say. Wait a minute. Who who's the we? Am I part of the we? Is the we someone else? Who is the we? What? I know we you can your room. easily get drawn into that we and and think that that you're the we. But but if I step back, I wonder who is the we. But I think we're, we're social animals, like wolf, a wolf pack or human pack. We're we're not like the lion. I think we we always like have a, a social life. Like people join chorus, um, uh, 
they join stamp collecting. They tend uh, there's a tendency to become a we, because people like uh, I'm a people too, <laughs> like to be with other people just like us now. It's more fun when there's several ideas flowing here, and so I think I think um, that's what. Um, Question is, how much are we an individual and how much are we social beings? It's, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that goes back to a sort of like, you know, older, uh, you know, we were talking briefly about, you know, the enlightenment that goes back to kind of an older philosophical debate, of course, you know, right. That's part of the enlightenment debate. It also informs a lot of American transcendentalism to, um, with Emerson, you know, uh, famously talking about the, you know, the the sort of transcendence you can achieve, sort of as a solitary individual in a crowd, you know, the sort of sort of like what it means to to maintain your sense of self, you know, in the the kind of mass. Um, Don't forget Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. <laughs> right you right yeah right kind of going against everything um and i think there's also like just to you know since we're we're nearing the end of the the hour here um you know there's another context for this historical context for this poem which is of course um the fears that were circulating in the 1960s of overpopulation um so there's uh you know there was this this uh, suddenly with the baby boom and everything after world war ii there was this 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 suddenly this discourse in the 60s that like oh no we're, we're humanity is growing exponentially and that's like that's going to be you know the biggest problem we face and this is sort of you know th this kind of concern eventually morphed into uh, contemporary like um uh analysis and and, and sort of uh concern for for, for uh Climate, or contemporary analysis of climate change and and a general sort of ecological awareness, but you know that kind of fear in the '60s like motivated a lot of different kinds of thinking about you know conservation and stuff like that. And I think there's a way in which he's sort of kind of writing about that in a way. You know, there's this numerousness, this exponential growth of humanity that's kind of like like wow, what are, what are we gonna do? <laughs> um, what's gonna happen? And it, and that's a very different. You know, I think it's very different from the sort of the 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 crowds and the you know the blab of the pave and all this stuff that we see in, in Whitman. You know, this 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 kind of like just like oh wow, you know, it's so cool being in a city because there's just so much humanity, it's so vibrant. And then you have this version of it where it's just like oh yeah, being in a city is cool, but like it's also you you see so many you see you're confronted with the mass of humanity and it just seems to be growing and it seems unstoppable um and it's what we've chosen right like it's like you know that it's i mean of course the, the the overpopulation debate that whole moment you know that's it's it's controversial for 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 lots of reasons and it didn't quite pan out to be the giant uh you know so there's some really like alarmist stuff back in the 60s where we're like oh my god we're all gonna starve to death uh which didn't exactly um you know happen but uh there's you know there there is that there is that real confrontation with with humanity as a kind of geological force um almost like the minerals you know the mineral fact right of this poem like there's there's the stones of the bridge and there's just like the ceaseless flow of people in New York City and both of those things seem as like just as impenetrable uh equally impenetrable right they're coeval <laughs> um even if they're not really because everybody has their own inner life and it's and and it's it's rich and complex in its own way and so and so it's it's always hard you know to 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 think about the humanity to think about numerousness to think about like just humanity is a mass when there's so much like inner depth and richness. I really think that's what this poem is trying to trying to figure out for itself, right? Like what on earth, how can we have humanism in the face of so much humanity? Like, right. It's not, it's not like that the more humanity there is, the more humanism there is necessarily. It actually seems like the opposite. The more humanity there is, the harder it is to kind of get a grasp of what it means to be human um and hence why these humans in this poem are very operate sort of infrastructurally like 
like part of a circulatory system and 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 there's this sudden interest in like stones and bridges it's just kind of like you know if we're going to talk about people we might as well be talking about stones too we might as well be talking about glass we might as well be talking about you know all these other things that make up the city because in some level they're 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 coeval on some level they're they, they can't be separated from each other um and it's it's a it's a provocation it's a challenging challenging provocation uh that that really like you know i think goes a long way for helping us to think about like with manianism or, or it kind of presents another account of what it means to be this kind of open-hearted maximalist poet who wants to say something about humanity because you have here this poem that's sort of challenged and troubled by that um, prospect but then I, there's I think, the oh. cash flow cash flow in new york cash flow has nothing to do they don't care about humanity yeah Just cash keeps flowing sure Right, right. There's that's that's a good point. Yeah, there's these other sorts of flows, right, that are actually, you know, are are more are brutal or unhuman, right? Or uh, uh, Bar Barbara, were you about to chime in, or was it? I I was gonna just say that um, I don't think that we we I'm overgeneralizing, but but from my perspective, it seems that ethics aren't considered enough then or now and that that there is a way to be an individual and live in community that requires some sense of ethics and um going back to your uh thinking about the the scare about population back in the 60s i was in grad school and um and the population has grown it was 3.5 billion when i was born and it's 9 billion now so it, it, it was <laughs> more than was, doubled it was a, a valid prediction but when i was in grad school there was a lot of blaming the poor because the poor had too many children yeah. um and that was obviously a a, a oversimplification um and and i remember some some uh push back against that idea. But that was a common idea that if poor people would just quit having all those babies, we wouldn't have this problem. So so there, there needs to be an ethic in in how you build this, this kind of humanity. Um, and I, I was just thinking about our current situation where AI is becoming a little like what industrialization was to people in in the in the during the industrial re revolution now we're having an ai revolution and um it's causing some of the same issues so i just find that interesting to bring it into the present i think yeah that that's 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 well said barbara and i, I think this this issue of ethics is maybe also what is this poem is attempting to to um explore perhaps to some degree right like you know i keep on thinking of the shipwreck of the singular and you know this this obsessed bewildered by the shipwreck of the singular we have chosen the meaning of of being numerous right is just kind of being like you, there there's there's a gap right there's some sort of space between um you know the singular and 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 the numerous and it gets filled with something and it's not clear what it gets filled with and this poem seems to be thinking about it. and perhaps you know there is this idea of a kind of like ethical right relationship to being a to being a sort of individual in society or a sort of singular uh entity in um you know in uh, you know among many um it kind of goes with that that idea of the of the coefficient the the coeval you know, individual in the city, right? Like there's actually, you know, no person is coeval with the place they're from. There's a, but there's a kind of gap between those things, right? And it gets filled in different ways um, between between being an individual and being part of a community, right? It's not, you're not just perfectly slotted in there in the community and it makes sense. There's actually a kind of distance that gets negotiated and renegotiated, a sense of belonging essentially. I, I think it's interesting that he, he also says we have chosen the meaning of being numerous. He doesn't just say we've chosen to be numerous. Yeah. As an emphasis on, on the meaning. 
We've chosen the meaning. Yeah, that's good. We have chosen the meaning of being numerous. And the meaning of being numerous seems in some ways the meaning of being human, right? Because the, 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 right, this goes back to what we were saying a moment ago about, I think Mary, you're saying it's about, uh, you know, the human, humans being social animals. Um, yeah, you know, with the, to, to be alone on a, on a, on an island, to be shipwrecked like Robinson Crusoe is something you have to be rescued from. And thus, you know, being numerous, being among others is is the preferable condition. And so that condition is going to be what we pursue at all odds, at all times. And it's going to eventually grow and grow and grow and grow until we're so numerous that, um, you know, we're just people are like a river <laughs> flowing through a city. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 interesting. I was Oh. Bar Barbara Lee uh... <laughs> thank you <laughs> I was thinking about uh, what you both said about um, having children and like that meaning of being numerous and the meaning of like living or something like for some people it's having children and you know um, passing things through the next generation but now that next generation is turning out to be so big that we have to build cities and high rises to put them all in so they can live somewhere yeah. and now that so that meaning has become this city like this city or like this yeah. group, like big group of people living in something we built for them to live in and that's yeah. cool you yeah, know that's the uh, yeah i i like that the, that new york city in some way becomes the meaning of being numerous it becomes the definition at least in the case of this poem um but barbara did you i was just thinking about um emily dickinson um living a uh, much more isolated life not not totally like we sometimes stereotype her but but certainly not not living in new york city life but she had her own numerousness inside of herself so so we can be alone and still be numerous yeah. um so so it's a not just an external concept but an internal one too it's yeah and right and that's that's also a bit like the containing multitudes the whitmanian containment of of multitudes or the you know of being sort of plural a plural singular entity insofar as you can contradict yourself as Whitman famously says you know like do I contradict myself well then fine I contradict myself because I am so many selves right like like I myself am numerous right I myself am already plural right like it's it's which is yeah which I think adds then this extra like exponential element to this poem right like it's a it's a plur it's a mm, plurality of pluralities or something um now it's how many br personal brands do you have yeah 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 and that that i think is also a little bit hinted at in this poem i think it's a little bit sensed right i mean because the late 60s too is also a time of increasing scrutiny on uh on marketing commercialization uh of uh, the commodification of everything and you kind of have that a little bit here too with the the city of corporations as he calls new york city right like this this all of these glass skyscrapers being built for ad agencies or banks um yeah and for it's um are new the old new to age is the young to youth yeah i love that yeah, yeah. um maybe one of the things that links the two poems is infest is a human the, the second poem is human infested yeah that's 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 good yeah that's great kurt yeah this this poem is infested by humanity that's absolutely what it is um it's also infested by things which we didn't we didn't talk too much about either uh but it's yeah it's 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 infested by not by a sort of emotion you know like in the Niedecker poem dark infested but it's infested by things by by quantities rather than qualities 